So these are, are very select types of grants, specialized program of research excellence. In order to get, to even apply for one, you have to have a base of peer-reviewed funded research, meaning you already have a team in place that's working together, that's uh, doing compelling enough work that it's been funded uh, through the NIH. So that already kind of puts you into a particular tier to be considered for one of these. There are certain key elements. You have to have a, a large s sample repository, biospecimens, and we've had just phenomenal support from our patients for years to consent to allow their removed tumor tissue to be used for research purposes, and they give a blood sample for comparison to, to study the genetics of what's this cancer done to the genes to allow this to develop. You, you really need to have a very good, robust patient advocate group behind you. That's a very important part of what we do and have had in terms of guiding the research questions, making sure we're taking our findings and, and not just sitting in a, in a narrow little window working on them, but we're thinking about how they can be applied into real life. Um, multiple disciplines working together, basic scientists saying, well, clinicians introducing a question. Ovarian cancer is very responsive to chemotherapy initially, but it figures out how to resist our chemo drugs, and that's what takes women's lives. We take that to a basic scientist who's a pharmacologist, who's an enzymologist, who knows how these drugs are processed, and says, I'm going to work on that. And that's what we've been doing over the years, and that's the kind of project we've been able to couple in this big grant to show we at Mayo work together, we bring different disciplines together, and therefore that gives us the ability to translate from basic or from a population into the clinic. And that's what these SPORE grants are really intended to do, is to translate into clinical application. Another one of our projects is asking ovarian cancers start in the pelvis spread within the abdominal cavity, or sometimes called the peritoneal cavity, meaning the abdomen and pelvis. They tend to stay in that site. They don't tend to spread widely throughout the body. They can do a lot of damage in that site. Our question is, how does this cancer trick the immune system in the peritoneal cavity into allowing this process to happen? It seems to create local suppression of the immune system. These women are not immune suppressed generally. That's another very intriguing question where we've coupled the efforts of a basic immunologist, an epidemiologist, a person who studies across a population, and a clinician to try to make this question come to light and tease it apart. Another project very exciting is saying, let's look at something completely different. We know that chemo does so much, but it can't take care of it completely. Turns out that certain viruses are toxic to cancer cells. Because ovarian cancers retain a receptor that lets them evade the immune system on the one hand, but happens to be a door through which measles virus can get into a cell. And once in there, measles virus is very toxic. It causes, uh, the way it kills cells is by basically poking a hole through the cell membrane, getting into the neighboring cell, and causing fusion of those two cells' membranes. That process continues and continues and continues until you've got what's called a syncytium, or a, basically a community, of about a hundred cells now all fused. And that is not viable. That dies. And so we've studied measles virus injections into the peritoneal cavity in women with ovarian cancer and seen some very 
promising early signs that this is actually having a good effect. So it's a way of getting around this issue of, re of resistance to chemo, because it's a completely novel mechanism that these cells have not seen before. And our fourth project is also hitting on this notion of chemotherapy resistance through small molecules that block the development of it. So I think, you know, Mayo is a place where we do cancer clinical trials. We've had a long history of exploring new treatments for cancer. We brought that whole potential to bear now into the arena of ovarian cancer with a special focus on different ways to get around chemo resistance. It would be one major theme running through at least three of the four projects included in the grant.